everybody, Josh RV Nerd with Vicious RV here with a completely revamped uh, expedition series from the Catalina lineup. So there's the Summit 7 series, which are, you know, single axle, seven and a half wides, but they're very, very basic. They're very budget focused. This is where stuff starts to get a little bit fun. So obviously, major difference here. They no longer have any sort of tin skin. They've gone to a hung fiberglass, maybe similar to like a, a, a Cherokee wolf pup, like Black Label, if you're familiar with that. It's fiberglass over a wood skeleton. Uh, the, the thing is, it makes it far more hail resistant. It's so much easier to clean, and I think it looks pretty smexy myself. These have the bike rack up front. They have a, uh, a kayak rack on the roof. You can always take those things off, but they are factory standard equipment. The idea here is that it's something that's made for going out and having a little bit of fun. Now, I don't think I'd necessarily take it out rock crawling or anything like that, but if you want to get it off the pavement a little bit, go on some well-established kind of, you know, two-track roads or something, you'd be able to take something like this out there and have a good time. 200 watts of solar on the roof and a thousand watt inverter gives you some function of those household outlets although not quite enough to run a coffee maker if you want to be able to run like lights or a fan or something like that like a standing fan or uh, anything you'd be able to do all that of course your normal lights work off the 12 volt power uh, we're carpetless we're easy cleaning um, and this is uh, a very popular layout overall now in the industry of double over double bunks in a really small size camper. It's something you could sleep five, six, seven, eight, uh, depending on how you're going to pack them, rack them, and stack them in there. Um, big refrigerator in an otherwise small trailer, too. They're not currently running the outside fridge off the inverter and it'd be kind of curious to know if that's something you think they should do or not. And things like that involving you and showing you excellent qualities on the RV and areas where maybe it doesn't work ideally for you. That's what I want to do in this video. And if you appreciate seeing the good with the bad, hit that subscribe button. Let's get going. And as we go through, I'm going to try to point out the extra widgets and whiz bangs that like the uh, Expedition series specifically gets a lot of that is outside, but not all of it. Um, they, they make this floor plan. Like if you like this layout, but you're like, I don't need all, I don't care about a kayak rack, dude. Like if you don't need all that, look at the Catalina Summit 7 model 184 bhs it's the exact same floor plan it just cuts out some of the extra fluff stuff that maybe you don't need now in the expedition series you will get a couple fun little things like i really like how they included their inverter remote right down there um below the household and usb plugs and i really love that they included household and usb plugs and i first saw it done really in the salem wildwood fsx division uh but these little uh, cube organizer tote things. They are catching on all over the place in the RV industry. And I don't, I don't dislike that. I think that's a very nice feature to find around. Well, there's little nitpicks I have here and there overall, very solid camper, but like occasionally some real sharp corners, uh, kind of right next to my chubby thighs that I don't know that I'm always terribly excited about. So a few things like that to kind of consider. Now it is an east west sideways bed, but I really like how they north south the Murphy sofa. It's interesting how they kind of were able to sort of split the difference between the two. And um, one of the other things that's kind of cool here is the, all those cube tote, st tote storage organizers. It is late. I'm tired. I can't talk. They translate into a ton of storage. Take a look at this. I was actually surprised with how long it took me to get all those things out of there. There's seven of them. A lot of RV manufacturers will give you a one or two just to kind of fill the visual space, but they actually went the extra mile to tuck those things all the way, you know, over the river and through the woods to grandmother's house. Now, when that bed lays down, I, you might notice there's a little bit of a gap at the, uh, the head and the foot of it. Um, it's a seven and a half foot wide camper, but that is a 74 inch long short queen bendy bed. Uh, you, you do have room. If you wanted to put a 60 by 80 true queen in this, you could, it would have to be a, uh, a bendy bed. I think I'm going to close the slide in a few minutes here and check this thing out in road mode to see if you're able to put the bed down, um, and leave it down even with the slide closed in transit. I, eyeballing it when the Murphy was down earlier, I don't think that's going to be the case. Now, that big u dinette that you saw over there, that can fold down into a big sleeper, and there is storage below it. Uh, TV hookups, probably really a secondary consideration on this camper, but that's what would be located uh, up here in that area. It is non-ducted air conditioning. I don't know that you really need central air in a little space like this, although they do not use the peekaboo I smell you bathroom door, so when you're not using the bathroom and not allowing it to air out, you may want to leave that open just to help keep it uh, a little bit cooler in there. Small camper, one of the, the biggest kind of hitches in this one's getty up is that the kitchen counter space is ultra limited. You could maybe throw a countertop extension there. You'd have to kind of contend with those power outlets a little bit. 
um, it'll be one of those things to kind of think about. But since it is a small camper, the uh, the big dining table over here is not terribly far away. You may be able to kind of leverage that for a little bit of prep work. There's two little minor details I'd personally like to see tweaked up a little bit on this. I, I get on the Summit 7 Series, the budget series, no drawers. They're trying to save money. I get it. I don't like it, but I get it. One drawer, one drawer down here doesn't seem the biggest ask in the world, but that's just kind of my two cents on the topic. Everybody has a difference of opinion. I'd be curious to know, what do you think? You know, how would you like the kitchen arranged? Anyway, up here we've got our uh, control panel with the little motion sense right there. So you can Obi-Wan Kenobi phone home this thing to activate. Very handy way to get your bearings in the RV like when you first come in late at night. And if you want to, you can Bluetooth connect to it with the free app that's available, which apparently that dude in the picture is downloading over there. Although I'm pretty sure that guy's uh, calling DoorDash for a beer runs <laughs> oh i really hope the guy watching uh the guy who's in that photo isn't watching this video right now that would be awkward but it wouldn't be the first time i ever put my foot in my mouth nice little pooch palace down there you could throw some maybe cargo totes down in that area and corner double over double bunks in a single axle camper are now thankfully more common than they used to be but it it used to be something that just did not exist so if what you're looking for is maximum sleeping in minimum size this is uh this is one to maybe consider it's kind of interesting there's usb plugs type a and type c top and bottom but only household outlets in the bottom area um i forgot something what did i forget hold on it'll come to me in a minute uh in the meantime i will mention that we are a six and a half foot tall sidewall so it's a traditional standard height and it is slightly narrow body at seven six wide so basically it's about the same width as most vehicles i would still definitely recommend something like um towing extension mirrors though I, that's a safety feature i don't ever recommend leaving off i know what i forgot i never opened the kitchen up and looked at the storage alakazam let's take a look at that right about now so again kitchen's pretty minimal storage is minimal notice how shallow that cabinet was under the sink that's where i think you know they had to do that because there's uh there's there's sink plumbing that sticks down I suspect they could probably put a drawer down a little bit low just above the furnace and, and make everything work. Just a theory. Ooh, nice touch. You know, I wish more manufacturers did this. Like the little, the, the, the towel hook hanger thing on the door, it doesn't have to be much. It just takes a little bit and suddenly now this becomes a function space. Well done. Good job, guys. Uh, oh, up here. They have a combination where it's kind of like a skylight and, uh, you know, four-inch fart fan wombo combo. The good news is it is just tall enough if you're over six foot like me to be able to stand in that thing. Now, if you listen, you can literally hear the peach fuzz on top of my head scrape it against it. It was darn close, but hey, it works. And if I'm only going to be in the shower for a few minutes, it's, it's enough. Oh, speaking of which... If you don't uh, want to waste any of your fresh water, if you want it like Maxwell House and good to the last drop, you will like the fact that the uh, Expedition Series or the Expedidions, <laughs> uh, they do have the shower miser system, which is a water recycler. That blue elbow will turn white when the shower water is warm, and then you know when your hot shower is ready without wasting any of your water. Kind of handy. You don't really use that when you're park camping, though. You really only use that when you're dry camping. Otherwise, you may inadvertently flood your fresh tank. And I just realized... That is only a mirror mirror on the wall. It is not a medicine cabinet. That is also one of those little things. It's such a stupid thing for me to constantly get stuck on. But I really do like it when I have even a basic, basic medicine cabinet in an RV instead of absolutely none. So let's check this bed and road mode, shall we? Ooh! Ooh! The, uh, whether they did it on purpose or not, you want to talk about barely the uh the cushion on the sofa actually squishes but the fact is you can lay this down the bed is functional and accessible in transit that is a nice surprising find i i i, I can't remember i see so many rvs i can't always remember everything year to year i didn't think that was going to happen that is cool and you know our sink our refrigerator are available you can get back to the bunks you can get back to the bathroom and once again Man, they threaded the needle, but the door just opens and closes without needing any sort of, you know, crazy, weird stuff to, you know, get your travel function. 
Now, you may have also noticed that is not a Schwintech slide like it was in the past. That is a Norco exact slide. It is a cable slide system. A lot of manufacturers have gone to that over Schwintech. Um, and uh, it's still lightweight and seems to work pretty well. And it actually moves faster, which is one of the things I like. But while it's doing that, um, here's a tune that'll probably get me sued for copyright infringement. Here's the fella I was talking about earlier. B double E double R U and beer run. B double E double R U and beer run. All I need is a tan and a fiver, a car and a key and a sober driver. B double E double R U and beer run. That's it. And time it takes you to sing beer run, slides open, slides closed, just that easy. Bang. And carpetless. One of the other kind of niceties about this one, I think if you have like a tow package midsize pickup, like you got a tow package Tacoma or something like that, or equivalent kind of vehicle, there's a whole bunch in that class. Um, there's there's a lot of, I swear, like a lot of RVs kind of forget that there's a whole bunch of people with midsize pickups out there. This could be a really good fit for something like that. Now let's start right up front and work our way around. We have a lot to cover on this thing. Uh, that, that nose sweep, that's actually not fiberglass. The nose is an extra thick aluminum skin, 67% thicker than conventional sidewall skin. Now the, things like the bike rack, the kayak mount that you're going to see up on the roof, that stuff is all just factory standard on these. There's really not a whole lot of options, but a really clutch detail that's so easy to overlook here is the double propane tank with auto changeover regulator. People don't realize how much a simple propane bottle and like holder tray kind of costs. That's a chunk of money compared to a Summit 7 right there. So this is not going to be the least expensive little single axle, but it, it's also not going to be nearly the most expensive while still giving us a lot of those kind of nice little fun features, you know. Now down here in this front passenger compartment, um, there will be a light, I think, uh, man, I've seen a lot of RVs, I can't quite remember. You may have noticed it brightened up right there. I activated a little light switch on my camera. Um, this is where your 30 amp solar charge controller is located. You see your 1000 watt inverter. And um, I'm trying to remember, I've seen a lot of things, but I, I believe the entire Catalina series is basically, they're, they're using, yeah, they're using the gauge of wiring where if you wanted to bulk up to up to 600 watts of solar, I think, you could do that on here um, and not have to rewire everything. So they're using really heavy gauge wiring. Some manufacturers say, yeah, we got a 200 watt package, but if you want to expand on it, you're going to have to like gut it and rewire stuff. You won't have to do that here. Um, pretty solid power awning space on this one as well. And as you see, you got that multicolor kind of swelling party light. They were kind enough to fire up a generator and turn the lights on on this new building for me. It, it, literally, brand new building. They don't even have power uh, run to this thing yet. And they pulled a bunch of units in and powered them up for me. Aw awful nice folks over here. Um, and it's given us some cool looks at little things like that. So if you appreciate the extra effort in there, maybe just throw a little thank you, Coachman, down in the comment section. I'm sure some folks there would appreciate it. it takes a lot of time and effort to set something like this up. Now, on the back here, again, getting some more fun stuff like that. Uh, flip down cargo rack in the back and a ladder to get up to that fully walkable roof. Now, where you see that kayak mount located, um, you could certainly throw a kayak up there, but what it basically is, you know what, why am I talking about it? I, I'm, I'm tired at the end of the day, but I don't want to cheese this. I just want to climb up there and show you because it's something that you can do a lot more than just mount a kayak to it. Because sometimes there's certain things you just got to see and you got to go the extra mile to get it done. And what I'm getting at here is this. Um, obviously, yeah, a little kayak mount, but that's not all it necessarily has to be. The, uh, the roof rack where the, the kayak mounts are affixed to, those are pretty generic. There are solar panel kits that you could attach to this thing. Um, there are, you know, naturally bike racks. There's a whole world of accessories that you could, uh, you know, utilize here. I've always kind of wondered, though, man, it's got to be quite a project to heave a kayak up to the roof of this thing. I can barely get a kayak in the back of a truck without getting winded and skinning my shins or something like that. But, you know, that's just me. So thanks again for tuning in. Really, really appreciate it, folks. Leave me that feedback and check the links in the video description if you want to see where we have one of these parked at any given point and what we're asking. And if we're sold out, if you don't see anything pop up for those links, call our team and we're certainly happy to get you some figures anytime. And when you're ready, we're ready. We'll catch you next time. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. Bye.